In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a Unify AC mesh access point, adding it to my home network so I can have outdoor Wi-Fi from my house over there to my pool house over here. All the products I talk about in this video are gonna be linked in the description below. Looking through YouTube, I really didn't see a, a, a good how to install video. Some of the reasons why you would choose the mesh access point over some of the other ubiquity access points. So I'm gonna talk about that too. It's an indoor outdoor access point I'm adding to my Unify home network just so we have a little more coverage in the backyard um, and we can be on the Wi-Fi. It's nice that it's outdoor rated. I'm gonna, my plan is to mount it right on the wall. I was planning ahead for this. Last summer I added an ethernet cord. I added this uh, an ethernet cord underground, under the, under the, under the dirt along the fence line and up the wall and up into the attic space. So that's gonna permit me to run the access point as, as a true access point and not as a repeater like you would in, in a traditional mesh network. The advantage of this, um, higher speeds, lower latency, like nothing more reliable than a, a hardwired connection, right? I was smart when I did, when I ran the line, I actually ran two ethernet lines. It's nice to have that redundancy built in, right? Nice little wire grommet. The access point comes with a nice, uh, it's like a silicone grommet to fit on the bottom, makes it watertight. So there's, and uh, very important, you'll need to, you'll need to loop this a little bit. So there's a, a, a drip loop. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do it that far, obviously, but uh, so there's a drip loop in my ethernet connection. So there's absolutely no chance of water getting into that ethernet connection. So I decided to go with a Unify AP mesh rather than ap pro or long range or light or something because well number one outdoor number two it's cheaper why am i doing this why am i expanding my wi-fi to the backyard it's because um sometimes i want to stream sometimes i want to just surf the net while the kids are swimming i have guests who are staying out in the in the guest house here and they it's nice for them to have some wi-fi right so when you're terminating the ends of the cable um it doesn't really matter whether you're using 568A or 568B, you just have to do the same on both ends. So I'm doing 568B, orange stripe, orange, green stripe, blue, Where's my blue stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. There we go. If you're a true techie geek, this is the ultimate geek test. You can terminate your own ethernet cables. Yeah, you know, my eyes are not what they used to be. This is actually, <laughs> this, is hard, this is harder than I remember. But one of the other nice things about this access point is it is power over ethernet. So I will not need to worry about delivering power to it. I have a, a Unify switch that delivers PoE. It's recommended you have a surge protector on both ends of a uh, ethernet cable like this, especially between two buildings. You know, there's a chance that you could fry all your all your network equipment if like one place gets struck by lightning, electrical discharge or whatever. So I looked them up at the ETH SP. They're about 20 bucks. Just gonna go ahead, go ahead and add that to my network. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be living dangerously definitely recommended you over a long distance between two buildings an ethernet cord should be grounded should be surge protected so here's a helpful tip i like to cut my individual colors at a bit of an angle and that way i find it a whole lot easier to get through this bit in here there we go man take your crimping tool Ta -da! funny story about this blue ethernet cable 17 it was 17 years ago so i was living in london a bunch of roommates in a house together seven seven people in a house together yeah it was fun times the rogers tech come by to hook up some internet for the house five megabit connection it was huge you know huge bandwidth at the time and the tech came hooked up the service and left um a brand new open box of like 500 feet of ethernet cable just forgot about it we called Rogers, a gigantic company. I had no idea where to report this. I found it impossible in a, a gigantic company to get connected with the right people to try and return this 500 foot spool of cable. 
I tried. No one ever showed up to pick up the box. We lived there for two years, so they had their chances. So when we moved out of the house, we took the box with us. Me and my roomies have been living off of this 500 feet of cable, making patch cords, and this is this is actually the last of the Ethernet cable. Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> This is the end of the ethernet cable. It is the end of an era. Nice packaging ubiquity. Everything's packaged up, you know, environmentally conscious, but at the same time, everything's protected. It's great. These cute little bunny ears. It's gonna be so cute. I might put some googly eyes on it. Okay, and the mounting bracket is awesome. There's a built-in level. So you know that it's just straight and it's gonna be like mounted perfectly without having to measure anything is awesome awesome i've plugged in the mesh access point into my switch running my software here we just see focus focus your channel all right pending adoption adopt and it's really that simple to connect a new access point to your unify network i've also clicked the upgrade button it's up upgrading to the most recent firmware i think that's kind of important <laughs> here we go Beautiful. I hope you found this t tutorial helpful. Maybe watch some more of my videos. Da, ba, da, ba, da, da, ba, ba.